them with lead bullets that just sort of stick in them, right? Or should you shoot them with rubber bullets that bounce off of them? Which is better if they have the same mass, same velocity, right? Is it better for them to stick in the object or is it better for them to bounce off the object? Is it better to stick or bounce? Is it better to stick or bounce? Which one is it? How many say it's better to stick in them? Raise your hand. This is great. This is great. How many say it's better to bounce off them? Bounce off has a clear majority. All right, I'll put that one away. Let's go to the next one. Oh, okay, I'll do it. Oh, you had to really beg me on that. Time. Okay, so. Let us try, let us set up the bouncy guy. Okay, I'm going to figure out how high I need to lift this up to, to, uh, to knock it over. So let's try this height. Ooh, almost. Let's try a little higher. Ooh, it hit it again. That was funny. The rebound. Let's try like that height. Oh, that does it, right? Boom. We want our rights. We want our rights. <laughs> you can't have your rights. I'm oppressing you. <laughs> this is not that funny. Okay. Now, this is the non-bouncy ball. The question is, this guy, I, I raise it to about this height, yes? So the question is, does the non-bouncy ball knock it over lower, or does it knock it over higher? I think it's going to be more for the less for this guy. So let's try less. Uh -oh. That's about the same, isn't that same? He's not even getting close. It's like that's definitely higher, isn't that? That's definitely higher. It's like. No, oh, oh, here. Here. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely the one that doesn't bounce. The one that doesn't bounce is not as good, correct? correct. At knocking him over. So, how do we explain this? Does somebody want to explain why? Why is it better to bounce off of something to knock it over? You not only... Or momentum, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a bigger change in momentum. Think about the ball. Think about the ball, okay? Both of them stop moving to the left, correct? Both of these stop moving to the left, but one of them, not only did it stop moving to the left, but it started moving to the right, correct? Yeah? So which is a bigger change in momentum? Is it bigger to stop, or is it bigger to turn around and go back the other way? That's a bigger change. That requires more force, correct? Yeah, because it's a bigger change. Remember the, the, the problems we solved where the baseball went into the outfield, right? When you turn around and go back, guys, can I interrupt? When you turn around and go back, then that's a bigger change in momentum. So, so yeah, um, that, that's why it's more force. A little applause for the rubber bullets. Okay. All right. Now. Interesting trivia, interesting trivia. There was a guy named Pelton who designed a water wheel. It was a better water wheel, okay? Let me see if I can draw a circle. Can I draw a circle? That's not a very good circle. I'm very sorry about it. I'm sorry. I already applaud. applaud. All right. Here is a mill pond. Here is a water wheel, okay? Before... Uh, 1800, this is how we got all of our power that wasn't like horses and stuff like that, right? We would have falling water, and the way it works is that the water goes sploosh onto the wheel, and it stops moving. It stops moving down. Doesn't that exert a force on the wheel? Yes. And the wheel will spin. Okay, the wheel will go around this way. This is an ordinary water wheel. Now, Pelton designed a wheel that works in the following way. Okay? He replaced this with a little scoop and now the water hits this and has actually shot up in the air a little bit, huh? Yeah? yeah? Have you ever done that with a cup? You stick it, you're going to rinse the cup out and the water goes down one side of the cup and then it goes up the other side and goes all over you, yes? 
It makes it look like you wet your pants, correct? <laughs> this is what always happens. How many people has that happened to? Maybe not the wetting the pants part, but the, the water all over, right? So that's, that's what they did, was he designed it this way. His water wheel was suddenly much more efficient than any other water wheel. The sad thing is that he developed this right before they invented the steam engine, and so nobody cared. Isn't that sad? <laughs> He's there trying to sell his little Pelton wheel, and they're all like, we want to burn coal. Yeah? There we go. All right, so there's Pelton wheel. I think we need to talk about explosions. Don't you think we do? Yeah, let's talk about explosions. Okay, now, I want you to know that the fireworks that I use for these demonstrations are all, these are all legal fireworks in Nevada. Okay? <laughs> what? Okay, so, um, but they are very loud fireworks, and so I will try to yell fire in the hole, okay, before I, I set them off, and you should really plug your ears, because it's just too loud. I'm going to be wearing uh, my little matching earmuffs here. I've got, like, I'm accessorizing. And the people in the front row, I think the people in the front row should um, should also try to kind of cover their eyes so that not, no big chunks go into their eyes. So you can kind of... <laughs> and you're kind of ready for anything. I'm just joking about that m mostly. Okay. All right. So let's look at an ordinary explosion. Let's look at an ordinary explosion. We've got Coke and Pepsi. This is just classic. Okay. All right. Here we have it. Oh, i got to put my... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, are we ready? <laughs> Fire in the hole! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> okay, now. When the next class comes in, when the next class comes in, they're going to say, what's that smell? The answer is always the same. It's always, it's something Youngberg's doing. I don't know why everything in his room, the smell comes over here, but ask Youngberg. Okay? That's always the answer to that. Now, in this explosion, this was a very simple explosion. It was also a very explody explosion. Okay? And the cans went this way and that way. Okay, this was a linear, I tried to keep them as, as linear as I could, right? And it is possible that before the explosion, for sure, the total momentum of the cans was zero. After the explosion, is it possible that it was still zero? Yeah, it's possible, because this could have like, you know, plus something in momentum. This guy could have minus something in momentum added together. It could still be zero, yes? And in fact, in explosions, the momentum before and after is the same. So... Uh, for example, Oklahoma City. When Oklahoma, when, the, when Timothy McVeigh exploded the bomb in front of the federal building in, in uh, Oklahoma City, right? What, what they noticed was that part of the truck went this way, part of the truck went that way. Did they have all the pieces? No, they didn't have all the pieces, and so they went and looked, and sure enough, you know, four blocks away, they found like the rear transaxle or so of the truck, right? Or the rear drive axle was like thrown blocks and blocks away, and they could do that from the explosion. Now. Keep in mind that some of the stuff that's moving in a, after an explosion is just the explosive gases themselves. But there's ways to sort of figure out which way the explosive gases went and figure that out. Okay. Speaking of explosive gases, um, have you seen on a, uh, a cannon, on a tank, what is that thing at the end of the cannon? Does anybody know? It sticks out. Yeah, it sticks out. It's like a thing like this. Mm. Yeah? Doesn't it? The front of a tank looks like this. The shell somehow comes out the front. What is that thing? Does anybody know? Because I know what it is. It's not really, it probably does muffle it a little, little bit. What it is, is it's called a muzzle brake. And the notion is this, that when the shell is exiting, and this is exciting, right? When it's exiting the barrel of the gun, it's at some instant right there, correct? As it flies down the barrel. All the explosive gases that have up until now been propelling it out of the barrel are now shunted out of this muzzle brake, and they go this way, right? 
So when you look at those things after they're fired or when they're firing, the flames and stuff are coming back. For a tank, that's not.